You know the feeling, right? If you're a tech hobbyist, you've been there. You spend all this time planning. You build this perfect, powerful machine. You fire it up, and then, boom, you hit a wall you just did not see coming. So today, let's get into one of those classic home lab stories. And this, right here, this is the golden question. It's that sinking feeling of panic and a little bit of self-doubt that honestly kicks off every good troubleshooting adventure. You start asking yourself, wait, is my machine not powerful enough or am I the problem? All right, so here's the scene. Our builder has this shiny new three node Proxmox cluster, which is just a great way to manage virtual machines. And they're feeling pretty good, especially with 32 gigs of RAM. The thinking was, CPU will be the bottleneck for sure. 32 gigs of RAM, that can handle anything. And the goal? Simple. Just some good old fashioned glorious home lab chaos. And then day one happened. After spinning up just a couple of virtual machines, we're talking a handful. The memory usage graph just shot through the roof. Half the RAM, 16 gigabytes, was just gone instantly. And this is before anything really interesting had even started. So yeah, this is the point where the panic starts to set in. And that brings us right to our first big hurdle, the unexpected RAM wall. You know, it's that jarring moment when the one resource you thought you had tons of suddenly feels like it's about to run out and you're just left scrambling, trying to figure out what went wrong. So what do you do when you hit a wall like that? Well, you turn to the internet, of course, which leads us right into section two, seeking the wisdom of the crowd. Our builder jumped on the community forums and they got, well, they got a lot of very different opinions. The first voice to emerge from the crowd was, you know, the calm, logical one. It was like a soothing slap of reality. They basically said, hey, relax. The whole point of having RAM is to use it. This isn't a crisis. This is just your system doing its job. Which is a totally valid point. And then you get the more uh, direct feedback. This group immediately pointed out what they saw as a huge flaw in the strategy. Using full desktop operating systems, complete with graphical user interfaces, or GUIs. For most server stuff, those are just incredibly memory-hungry and, let's be honest, total overkill. And, of course, you can't even whisper the word RAM in a home lab forum without summoning the LXC enthusiasts. They just show up like a containerized Batman, with one single, powerful message screamed in all caps, Use Linux Containers, or LXC. And you know what? Their arguments were actually really compelling. I mean, just look at the difference here. It's wild. A full VM, it's like using a moving truck to carry a single box of cereal. It's got its own entire operating system, its own kernel, all its own drivers, the whole shebang. But an LXC container, it's way smarter. It just shares the host's kernel. It's a total resource zipper. It uses just a tiny fraction of the memory to run the exact same service. Then another group brought up this really crucial technical point about how Linux actually manages memory. See that scary graph from Proxmox? A lot of the time, it's showing you the allocated RAM, not what's actively being used. Linux is smart. It'll take any memory you're not using and use it for file caching to make things faster. So a high usage number can actually be a sign of a really efficient system, not one that's about to crash. And the advice, it just kept on coming. You had the ZFS user, that's a popular file system, with an energy I honestly aspired to have. You had the market analyst, warning about insane RAM prices. And then there's my favorite, the cryptic veteran who just drops a random version number and then vanishes into digital mist. It's all part of the home lab experience. So after sifting through all this advice, the good, the bad, and the cryptic, a much clearer picture started to form. And that brings us to the real culprit. And it wasn't at all what our builder thought it was. And there it is, the epiphany, the light bulb moment. The issue wasn't a hardware limitation at all, it was a user limitation. The problem was a strategy of just giving every single virtual machine a huge chunk of RAM just in case without any real thought about efficiency. It was pure chaos. So all of that chaotic community advice, it actually boiled down to a few universal truths. First, graphical interfaces are absolute RAM hogs. Get rid of them on your servers. Second, you have to understand what your graphs are actually telling you. Allocated is not the same as used. Third, you gotta embrace containers. They are just so much more efficient. And maybe most importantly, stop fearing high RAM usage. It often means your system is actually working really, really well. 
this single line right here, this changed everything. It completely reframes the whole philosophy of managing your resources. See, the goal isn't to keep your RAM usage low. The goal is to have your system effectively use the resources you paid for. Memory that's just sitting there idle, it's doing absolutely nothing for you. So this new philosophy, it leads us directly to the optimization plan. It's time to turn all these big ideas and realizations into real, actual steps to fix the problem. And here's the best part. All without buying a single new stick of memory. Okay, so here's the new six-step strategy. Step one, ditch the desktop GUIs. That'll free up huge chunks of RAM right away. Step two, migrate as many services as you can to lightweight LXC containers. Step three, enable something called memory ballooning. It basically lets your virtual machines dynamically share RAM instead of hoarding it. Step four, use a tool like HTOP to check the true memory usage inside of VM, not just the dashboard number. Step five, and this is a big one, just stop panicking about high usage. And finally, step six, with all this optimization, you can avoid buying more RAM and save your money for something else. Which brings us full circle, all the way back to that first panicked question that started this whole spiral of frantic online research. And the answer is a definitive resounding no. The solution was never about buying more hardware. It was about knowledge, it was about making more efficient choices, understanding the tools a little better, and shifting from a mindset of just hoarding resources to one of smart, effective allocation. And really, this whole story is just a perfect summary of what the home lab hobby is all about, isn't it? It's this constant cycle of building something, hitting a problem, tweaking it, and then having that amazing aha moment where you realize there was a much, much smarter way to do it all along. And you know what? That's the fun of it. So if you're out there building your own projects, what's the one single idea you should really take away from this whole journey? What is the core principle that will save you time, money, and a whole lot of stress? It's this. Burn this phrase into your brain. Stop thinking about how much RAM you have left and start thinking about how well you're actually using the RAM you have. Because at the end of the day, efficiency almost always beats raw capacity.